Good morning and welcome to Title Talk. I'm Karen Hamstra. It's Monday, July 29th, and let me show you some new things we have at Marion Public Library. The first is a book called Japanese Paper Flowers by Hiromi Yamazaki, and this book can be found at 736.98 YAM. Right now it's on the new bookshelf, of course. Um, it just has lovely flowers that you can make out of paper and it does have the patterns for these flowers there's more on the back cover the, the entire book is filled with flowers it's not a very thick book however um, they're just really neat they do look like they are fairly detailed to make with small pieces so if that's important to you beware of that next we have the vagabonds by Jeff Gwen this is the story of Henry Ford and Thomas Edison's 10-year road trip. They began going camping, traveling around the country in 1914, uh, mainly to check out the conditions for ro of roads for cars and accommodations for travelers. Uh, they even went deep into the Everglades on their adventures, and they continued this until 1925. Uh, by that time <clears throat> their own personal fame made it difficult for them to travel incognito and uh, road conditions and accommodations had improved immensely. But this is the story of those years when they were going on their summer trips. This can be found at 917.304 and again the author is Jeff Gwynn, The Vagabonds. We have a new knitting book called Knitted Animal Friends. Aren't they? They are just the cutest things. <laughs> I just had to show you this book. The author is Louise Crowther. Crowther. It's over 40 knitting patterns for adorable animal dolls, their clothing, and accessories. They just have the most darling accessories. I don't know if you can see their little shoes. Um, this is at 746.432. CRO. For example, here is Dorothy the mouse. You see she has her little shoes on. And they're all named. This is Holly the hedgehog. Cute little shoes. Darling little dress. Cute hedgehog hair. Stanley the raccoon. We do have boys in the book too. Just as cute as it can be. Some little child would love to have a set of those animals. And then if you think you might like to get back to your childhood craft of yarn hooking, well, it's, it's in a new age. This is Yarn Hooking, 14 Fabulous Projects for the Modern Rug Hooker. And it has full-size templates included. And this can be found, it's by Carol Rennison. R-E-N-N-I-S-O-N -N -N at 746.74. It has patterns in the back. Um, if you wanted to make a Christmas stocking with a robin on it. And let's see. Oh, there's a book cover. I can't quite imagine how that would work, but there it is. Just all kinds of cute, cute things. Pillows. You name it. So, now it's on to fiction, I believe. This is called The Last Collection, a novel of Elsa Scaparelli and Coco Chanel by Jean Mackin. <clears throat> and it's pretty much what it says it is. An American woman becomes entangled in the intense rivalry between iconic fashion designers Coco Chanel and Elsa Scaparelli in this captivating novel from the acclaimed author of The Beautiful American. The Last Collection. I believe it takes place in 1938, so probably it was the last collection they showed before World War II erupted. Here is a new Western book. I know some of our watchers, or yeah, our watchers really like Westerns. We don't get a whole lot of them, but John D. Nesbitt has a new one. He's a Spur Award-winning author, and this is called Dusk Along the Neobrera. Uh, it's a coming-of-age story about a young man working at a ranch, and he connects the death of a hard-scrabble homesteader 
with the death of an old horse trader some 15 years earlier. So you can read all about how that unravels. Here is The Ditch by Herman Koch. He is a Dutch author and he is known, let's see, what was his other book called? Oh yes, The Dinner. Um, that was a New York Times best-selling novel. This, in this one, Robert Walter, the popular mayor of Amsterdam, sees his wife toss her head back with laughter while she's chatting with one of his councilmen at a New Year's reception. Well, I think he just blows this all out of proportion and becomes convinced that she is having an affair and things just go from there. So you can read all about it. Killer in the Carriage House by Sheila Connolly. Need I say that this is a mystery book? Um, Sheila Connolly has a ton of books that she has written. This is a list of her books. So you may well know her because she's obviously quite the popular author. After 15 years away, Kate Hamilton never expected to end up in her hometown of Asheboro, Maryland full time. And she definitely didn't expect to be leading the charge of recreating the town as a Victorian village and tourist attraction. But as unexpected as the circumstances are, Kate is ready to tackle them. The town, however, needs some convincing. And things go on from there. The Killer in the Carriage House. Um, now I have some books that we are releasing tomorrow. They are by popular authors, so we won't go into them in any great detail. We have a new one by Richard Russo. Chances are a novel. This is his first novel in 10 years. So if you thought he had just given up writing and you had written him off your list, if you used to read him, he's back. And this one is not any particular genre. It's about three 60-year-old men who convene for the weekend on Martha's Vineyard. Richard Russo. Stephen Hunter has a new one. We haven't maybe heard from him for a little bit either. Game of Snipers. This is a Bob Lee Swagger novel. And again, this will be released tomorrow. <clears throat> Master Sniper Bob Lee Swagger must confront the one enemy he never thought he would encounter. His equal. Um... Stephen Hunter is a Pulitzer Prize winning author, and this time a mysterious assassin is zeroing in on his target and only Swagger can stop him before it's too late. Game of Snipers. Iris Johansson has a new novel, Smokescreen. This one we already know is going to be extremely popular, so it will be on our hit list, meaning the loan for it will only be 10 days and it can be renewed once if there are no reserves, but that probably is not going to be the case while it's on the hit list. So Iris Johansson is always very popular. Fiona Davis has a new one coming out tomorrow, The Chelsea Girls. Um, she is the author of The Masterpiece, and this one has received a lot of good pre-publication reviews. It is about some young women who stay at the Chelsea Hotel in New York City, which has long been an oasis for creative types, artists, writers, musicians, actors, filmmakers, poets, you name it. Uh, they have all called it home, and Hazel Ripley, an act play, she's a playwright, and actress Maxine Mead are determined to use that address to their advantage. This is a mystery. We have The Book Charmer by Karen Hawkins. Gotta love that name. It is a romance and it will be released tomorrow. Sarah Dove is no ordinary bookworm. To her, books have always been more than objects. They live, breathe, and sometimes they even speak. Sarah grows up to become the librarian in her quaint southern town of Dove Pond, North Carolina, and her gift helps her place every book in the hands of the perfect reader. Recently, however, the books have been whispering about something out of the ordinary, the arrival of a displaced city girl named Grace Wheeler. So, The Book Charmer by Karen Hawkins. We have The Hounds of Justice by Claire O'Dell. 
This is part of the Janet Watson Chronicles series, and this is a science fiction book. And again, this will release tomorrow. Um, Janet Watson is teaching at Georgetown University Hospital. Um, there's an extremist faction called the Brotherhood of Redemption that launches a failed assassination on the president that causes mass destruction. The Hound of Justice. Jocelyn Jackson, Never Have I Ever. This will also be released tomorrow. I know a lot of people have been excited about the release of this book. There is one hold on it that I know of, so you'll need to place a hold on this one. And it says, don't afford game, don't play games you can't afford to lose. <clears throat> Amy Way is proud of her ordinary life and the simple pleasures that come from it. Teaching driving lessons, baking cookies for new neighbors, helping her best friend Charlotte run their local book club. Her greatest joy is her family, her devoted professor husband, her spirited 15-year-old stepdaughter, her adorable infant son. But Amy's sweet, uncomplicated life begins to unravel when the mysterious and alluring Angelica Rue arrives on her doorstep one book club night. Never have I ever. Jocelyn Jackson. And our last book is by Ben Coe's The Russian. Ben is very popular. And this time, America has a new hero in his latest book. Ruthless, clever, and unbelievably violent, the Russian mafia has taken over the criminal underworld in the United States. Law enforcement at every level has been unable to stem the tide. When a powerful Russian mob family declares war by publicly executing two high-profile American politicians, the message is unmistakable. Opposition will be met with deadly force. So read what happens in the Russian. And finally, I do have one audiobook that I want to mention that we have. It is Debbie Maycomer's new book, Window on the Bay. Uh, this is on the bestseller list right now. However, I do happen to know that it is checked out because I have it checked out. <laughs> but it's, it's very good and I will be returning it just as soon as I finish listening to it. So if you would like to listen to Debbie Maycomer's new Window on the Bay book, please place a hold on it or give us a call and we will place a hold on it for you. So I hope you have a great week of reading and I will see you next week. Happy reading!